I'll record. All right, I'll record this webinar for us. So if you ever need to refer back to it, the recording will be available. Also for anyone who might be missing out, uh, we can share this with them afterwards. Welcome, we are going to be talking about learner assessment for ECD centers today. Let me open my presentation. Welcome everyone. My name is Helene Brandt. I am the marketing manager for Grow ECD. And joining me today is Lisa Fuertman, our head of education. Now, Lisa has many years of experience having run her own preschool and also having studied um, special needs learning. And she is going to help us today to navigate through the practicalities of the learner assessment season, which is lying ahead. I'm sure by the end of the second term, you want to sit back and be confident knowing that you have done learner assessments. You have shared an amazing progress report with parents and that you and your teachers are really thinking about where every learner is, how, whether they're on track or not, and how you'll be adapting your um, program for the third term to support all of the learning needs for your, le for your learners. So today, we're discussing how to use milestones and the NCF in the assessment process. We'll also talk about how to recognize and accurately define the milestones for children's development per age group, and the purpose behind doing learner assessment and what you'll be able to do with your learner assessment once it's complete. Lisa will explain the assessment process to us step by step and how to put it into practice and give you lots of practical tips as well. And we'll discuss how can Grow ECD help you further, whether it's learner assessment tool that we have, the training that we have, or any other ECD support that we can give you. Throughout, please feel free to use the chat section to let us know where you're from or ask any questions or share any comments. Uh, we would love to hear from you. All right, Lisa. So the National Curriculum Framework. I am a little bit scared when someone says the National Curriculum Framework. I've read through it. It's very, very comprehensive. Can you simplify for us and help us understand what does the NCF say about assessment and what we should be doing? Um, for assessments. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. So the, the National Curriculum Framework has been um, a, a set of guidelines um, that all teaching needs to take into account for the early, the, for the preschools. Mm. Um, and you will find that um, they were very clear when designing the national curriculum framework that there was an assessment process that they want all preschools to adopt. So the first part about this process is, um, sorry, I think my volume's a little bit down. Is that better? Yes, thank um, you. Just lean close. Thank you. Yeah. So the the starting is to uh, is preparing for assessment. Um, it's very important that um, every centre prepares in advance for an assessment time. Um, we expect that children are assessed throughout the year, but there will be certain times of the year where you will do a formal assessment. Number two is identifying through observation. And that's where we are very clear that it's important that um, continuous observations are done throughout the year, but not just observations, actually recording those observations, mm. which is number three. You need to record that information because it's so easy to forget what you've noticed about learners along the way. And you forget when you see how much they've grown and developed throughout the year um, that they've made significant progress. And then there's an interpreting of this information. Um, it's very important again that you don't just record, but you con that you spend a little bit of time thinking about it and deciding what um, the learners are able to do. Um, and then sorry to interrupt you, Lisa. Sorry yes. to interrupt you. I see that Jackie and Ivana also saying it's very soft. 
Um, just try to come even a little bit closer. We we won't look up your nostrils. Just come a little bit closer. Yeah. And, yeah. I also have um across my screen black uh, blocks, so I can't actually see the slide. So I don't know oh. if you're able to maybe adjust something there. Does, is that better? That's better. There's okay. still one more black block, but okay. And then the reporting and discussing is that if you don't pull your parents in closer at the beginning of the year, which is right now, they won't be able to support your efforts in the classroom by helping the children at home. And things will be a big surprise at the end of the year when you say to them, sure, you know, your little one is really struggling. The next part is that you're, the planning of activities it's so amazing to start the year able to plan for every single child's individual needs rather than get further down into the year and think, well, I, I, I think all three-year-olds can do this or that. It's better to be able to plan per child. Absolutely. Okay, so that's the national curriculum framework. All right. So... The assessment must take into account all the elders, which are the early learning development areas. So your assessment must look at how, what is the child's well-being? Do they have identity and belonging? Do they feel that in their classroom and in their everyday? What is their communication like? Do you explore mathematics and how is that developing in the child? How is their creativity? And how is their knowledge and understanding of the world? So all of these aspects should be taken into account when planning an assessment. Excellent. So um, in the assessment tool that we'll be sharing with you later, we've covered all of those elders um, to make sure that it's a comprehensive tool. Now, Lisa, where does observation fit in with assessment? And what's the difference? Okay, so when we do assessments, we do certain activities on a particular day so that we can benchmark whether all the children in the class are able to do it at the same time. So that's your more formal time. But the observation should be throughout the year. You should be able to watch while the children are playing and um, interacting with each other and just jot down the things that you are noticing. Observation really means watching carefully and also listening to each child, listening to how they're interacting and how they are developing. Excellent, thank you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about developmental milestones. I know, Lisa, that when I became a parent, there were many moms and dads. They were obsessed with developmental milestones. Can your child yeah. crawl? Can, can your child stand on one leg for 10 seconds? And, and expectations of what should happen at which age group? Um, or how should we as center owners and teachers interpret the milestones and also guide parents on how to use these? Yeah. So developmental milestones are quite useful because they are universal. They are not just for the South African market. They're actually for all children. It talks about how do children play, learn, speak? How do they behave? Um, and it's a predictable behavior. So I would not expect a one-year-old to be fluent and be able to speak in full sentences. But if a five-year-old is not at that point, I would then be concerned because across the world, five-year-olds generally can speak in full sentences. Across the world, one-year-olds are learning to crawl. That doesn't mean that every single one has to be able to do everything by the same time. So a milestone is almost as it says, it's a measure. And it's very helpful that we know what children should be able to do. Yes. So for those of you who are interested in um, in the milestones, we have some slides coming up with, with suggested milestones per age group. We're not going to read through them today, but we can yeah. absolutely share the slides with you. And so thanks, Lisa. I think you've already explained in how we use the milestones yeah. um, in the framework. Also, if you have parents who are very interested in the milestones and they want to know what to expect at each age level, 
there's a lovely resource that we found, which we've loaded on the Grow app. It's available for free from our resource center. It's called the Milestone Checklist Resource. And if you go into the free Grow ECD app, go into the My Tools Resource Center, you can download this under the Parent Communications category and share that with parents. Lovely. All right, and here are some of the, um, the suggestions, like do a two to four piece puzzle or kick a ball all at the different age groups. Yeah. Okay, Lisa, so... At this point, Helene, you would probably see... Sorry. Go for it. Um, so, the, yeah, so those lists of milestones, you will be able to see that they guided the questions mm. that have been asked in the learner assessment. So, and, it, and a question is recall stories and sequence of events. A 45-year-old should be able to start to be doing that. So that was used to create the questions that we have in the assessment. Excellent. Okay. Now let's maybe get into the process of assessing a child. Um, and, and maybe can you, I, I saw a question on the, on, the, on the Facebook Live. People were asking how frequently should we assess a child? Four times a year, once a year? What is your suggestion? Okay, so practically, um, in my experience, I found it best to assess my children twice a year. Those were my formal assessments because it does take a little bit of time to complete a learner assessment. And we want a big enough gap between the first assessment and the next assessment to allow the children time to develop. We also want to allow ourselves time to implement the changes that we decided we needed to make based on the children's um, assessment. Mm -hmm. So if you if you have run four assessments back to back across the year, um, it's not easy um, to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So um, let's get into this process. Right. Again, our process is very similar to what was said um, in the NCF in that we first assess and very importantly, this is the time of the year where you need to start to give parents feedback. Parents don't like to be blindsided at the end of the year where you say, oh, you know, your child has really got some issues uh, developmentally, can't do a, a, a basic puzzle, whatever. And they were saying, why didn't you tell me about that earlier in the year? I could have helped. So that's when you start. Then you develop an individual plan for groups and for children to address these needs. So that's when you say, oh, I've got four children that are really struggling, even with a knob puzzle. So I'm going to put them in a special group and I'm going to work with them on that. So you can see it gives you a chance to, to plan. And it gives you a chance to look at which approach actually works well for your center and your children in your class. Then you put into, pray, into practice what you've discovered. And some children respond really well when they get one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. Other children respond pretty well when they're in a group. So you can decide how you want to do that. And then you review later on in the year by doing a second, what we call a slightly more formal assessment, and we are able to track the progress of the learners and again give the parents feedback. Because, you know, an involved parent is your greatest ally. Absolutely. And what will make them more involved than whether their child is growing, developing and flourishing and thriving? Okay, and you know what? Thing. Just to know that you notice them, you've, yes. you've observed them. That means my child is not just being left to his own devices. Somebody's noticed him. Yes, absolutely. So thank you for those who have sent in questions on the chat. Uh, Yvonne is asking whether we'll share the milestones per age group. Yes, we'll put that on the email. So tomorrow you'll get an email with all of the recording and the slides. And you can also send a WhatsApp message to our app help desk. Um, my colleague Terrell will put the app help desk WhatsApp number in the chat soon. Just save that to your phone. 
Um, there's also a question about whether the assessment we are showing you today aligns with ELOM. Lisa, let's see if I know the answer to this one. Um, ELOM, if I understand okay. it, ELOM is, if I understand it correctly, is an assessment of whether your curriculum and your program and the way you implement the program at your school or preschool is working. Whereas what we're talking about is an assessment that we've designed specifically for teachers to assess individual children and get feedback on individual children, which can also be shared with, with parents. So this is, a, is much more about what's working for teachers in the classroom and what um, is interpretable and actionable. Um, Lisa, anything else maybe to add absolutely. the corrections? <laughs> so, so, yeah. No, no, so absolutely correct. Elam gives you an overview of your center. It doesn't give you feedback on individual children. Elam has absolutely got its place and it's very, very well used as a monitoring and evaluation tool. Mm -hmm. What the, our assessment is, is it's a tool that is put in the hands of the teacher, not an external assessor mm -hmm. who perhaps takes that information away with them. We want the teacher to be upskilled and more knowledgeable about the children in her own class. Yep. All right. So why would we want to do that? Okay. So we assess learners so that we have a record of their growth and their development. Absolutely essential. We are able to plan activities specifically for them. We are able to see every single child as an individual. And we are able to see whether they are consistently not reaching their milestone, which may need a referral. Mm -hmm. And I would much rather that a teacher came to me and said, look, you know, we are concerned. I can then do early intervention, then wait until they're not school ready. And then to say, well, I didn't know. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, and I see that Jeanette here has a question in the chat. She says, if you give a parent feedback and they feel there's nothing wrong, what can be done? And Jeanette, I think that's why frequent um, and, and observation and learner assessment is going to be your friend. Because you'll be, when you do the assessment, you'll be uh, objectively looking at every child for every milestone and early learning development area and giving really good quality feedback. And if you do that consistently, no one can argue that what you are doing is showing the truth and the reality, you know? So, so I think that's going to be and a big, big part of helping you. Yeah. That's um, where the portfolio of work also mm -hmm. comes in because part of your observation is that you do collect um, samples of the work that the child has done. And if you're telling a parent that the child is unable to cut with a pair of scissors, it's so useful to open the child's art pack and show them this is what some of the children are able to cut and and this is what your child is it's doing. A comparison. So it's yeah. visual. So Lisa, in the question, so so in the learner yeah. assessment questions, you'll have two types of questions, right? Um, and here are two examples. So let Lisa explain. Right. So the first is an activity, which means that the teacher will prepare for it. And she will do it as if it was just a fun activity in the classroom. So she says to the learner, can you balance on one leg just like me? So that's the question that she's asking. And there is a no, a still developing or a yes, which means that you are able to assess very carefully which score to give the child. Mm -hmm. But then there's another one, which is more like an observation. It says, I am independent and confident when I arrive each day. That's not based on one day. That's an overview. And that is what a teacher needs to have in an observation book. How confident is he when he arrives? Or does he cry every single day? Those are the things that we are able to do through teacher observation rather than through a specific activity. Hmm. 
Excellent. So when you um, look at the assessment guide, which you'll be able to download and also see in the app where you can do the assessment in the app for free, you'll see the question, what the activity or observation is, and a very clear definition of no, still developing and yes. So even if your school has five or six classrooms and different teachers, every teacher will be able to use the same guide, right, um, for, for that relevant age group. So here's an example. This is an example of the four to five year old assessment activities. Here you can see social and emotional is the category or the, the, the elder, right? You see the question, the observation, and whether what a no still developing and yes looks like. So you, you can download these from the Grow app in advance to help you prepare uh, before you do your assessment. Yeah. In fact, let's talk about teachers, preparation. Um, yeah. Yeah. So preparation begins by training your teachers and getting them motivated. Mm -hmm. So we have an online training where the teacher can take her time and quietly go through the training on her phone in her own good time and learn all about the learner assessment. As a center owner, you should too, because you are then able to lead the teachers in your center. Then we arrange... Um, an assistant and plan. So what does that mean? On the day that I'm going to be doing the fine motor assessment with my learners, I'm going to need to sit at a table and work with groups at a time. It's so useful to say, could the could the cook come into the classroom and just observe the other children what you know while they're playing? Or can a parent maybe come in and help me for the day? Because it's so disruptive while you're trying to do a formal assessment when the rest of the class are running around like crazy. Yeah. So plan and arrange something to help you for that, if possible. Then review the questions and plan the activities. So you need to have all the tools into, in place, which is where you're going to collect your equipment. So if you are assessing the ability to cut and glue and draw... I can't keep jumping up to go and fetch scissors in my, you know, in, in the cupboard or go and fetch uh, uh, um, glue and pencil. I need to have it all ready so that I can move from one activity to the next. I would also like to group my learners into small manageable groups. And it can be by friends, those that get along or by the age group, you know, the younger ones all together or the ones that you feel you're concerned about, I would say four to five in a group. So imagine you want them all to kick a ball so that you can check if they can kick. I don't want to go through it one by one by one by one. It's easier for me to say to all five of them, okay, watch me. I can kick a ball. Can you do that? And they each have a turn. Mm. Then the assessment score sheet. It is built into your Grow app. So what you can do is you can just open your app and mark the children off straight away on your app. If you find that difficult to do, and if your connectivity is bad or your device is bad, you are then able to download off our site a printable where you can write the child's name and mark off on a piece of paper the score. Mm -hmm. The idea being... You don't want to lose that paper. So when the children are napping, you open up your app and you mark off on the app so that that score is there. Then what you need to do is explain to the other learners that they're also going to have a turn to come and sit with you at the table because they're all going to be watching. What is she doing? Why are they getting a puzzle? Why can't I do that? So you prepare the other learners as well. And then, yeah, make sure that you capture everything on your app because it is your permanent record. Absolutely. It isn't going to get lost. Yes. And also the app is really clever in that um, if you've captured all the details, for, let's say for all of the learners in your class, maybe it's 30 or however many learners, the app can also tell you how the whole class is doing. Maybe yes. maybe is the whole class struggling with um, emergent literacy, for example, then you know, oh, we need to do X, Y, or Z, or is it just a single child? And also, we'll show you later, you're probably asking, can I download it as a report for the parent? And the answer is yes. That's going to look so professional. 
Okay, so this is what it will look like in your app. If you, this is the, the, the part where you're getting ready. So go into your learners, go into assess learners. And if you click on the prepare assessment section, you can choose which age group you'll, you're assessing, two to three, three to four, or four to five-year-olds. It'll tell you what are those things that you need to have ready, like a ball and beads and wooden blocks. So like Lisa says, you're not running around looking for print or looking for a piece of paper. You know what you need to have ready. And if you click the help button, you can download that PDF rubric, which tells you exactly which questions you'll be asking. Okay, here is a great example of the assessment score sheet that Lisa was talking about. Now, Lisa, yeah. um, we had this list of these are the little things you need to have available in your basket, the things you get ready be before you assess the two to three, three to four year olds. Um, what, what do you um, suggest if we maybe don't have some of these things? The equipment. Oh, so, sorry, I, I, sorry, I was, okay. this. This is, you, you explain, you explain what's happening here. Yeah, so the equipment that we suggest you use is, is based on the centers that have, are using the grow kit because that was easy enough for us to do. But nothing in the grow kit is unique to us it's things that you can either make or you could buy from any supplier so an example is this is the what we would use um for the assessment but if the activity is a threading and you don't have the grow beads and laces you can see on the next slide that you could use any type of threading when we talk about can you stick two things together, we're talking stickle bricks or any connector toy. A pegboard is your hand-eye coordination. A chalk line is just as good as a balance beam because the idea is can you put one foot in front of the other? Mm -hmm. So no, you do not have to use special equipment for this assessment. Absolutely. Okay. And I see a great question from Michelle Hunter. She's asking whether we have an assessment for one to two year olds. Um, when and how, Lisa? Michelle, I saw that question come up and I panicked for a second because we have just launched our naught to two year old curriculum. Once I've got the naught to two year old curriculum complete and it, we are busy putting it online as well so that. Um, it's available as our other curriculum is online. I will be working on a learner assessment for naught to 12 months and 12 to 24 months. So okay. it is in the pipeline. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. We're very excited. We, we will definitely make sure that we advertise and email everyone um, as soon as that is ready so that you can know. All right. So let's talk about the free assessment tool. I'm going to show you a quick little video. This is Tamsin, and here she is getting ready to assess her learners. Thank you. So that was teacher Tamron in the midst of COVID-19 <laughs> doing her learner assessments. And you can see that she's got a comfortable, relaxed environment. She's prepared. All the things she needs is ready. She's using the app um, and the children are busy threading. So where do you complete the learner assessment on the app? So the giraffe app is the app for the center owner. The Meerkat app is the app for the teachers. You go into the My Learner section, Assess Learner, and then Run Assessment. 
So let's look at the the, the nitty gritty of running the assessment. Lisa, in the middle here, it, it's got me two options. So tell me about what's happening here. So um, we have given teachers the option of assessing an individual learner one by one or by development area. So imagine a child is sick for the day and has missed the assessment. I want to be able to assess him all the way down and not go through every area um, in, a, in a group. So mm. I've got two options. So um, th that's what we are using here. And here I've, I've put Aiden, Farah and Tara into a group. And when I do the threading activity, I'm easily able to go yes, no, still developing, click, click, click. And I can put a comment straight away because what I actually wanted to say was that Farah was struggling today, but her mom said she was not feeling well. So maybe I'll check her again another day, you know, mm. things like that. Mm. It's really nice that you can add those observations in there. And yeah. then you can also, as the center owner or as the teacher, check the progress. And you can, for example, here, I click view my assessment progress by age group. And I'm checking in the four to five-year-olds, I have 18 learners. Six of them have already been assessed. Eight are in progress and four are not eligible for assessment at this stage. So you can really check and see um, that assessment is on track. Maybe you have a deadline by when you want it to be complete. And it helps the center owner to know, you know, where her classes are with the assessment. Mm. So, so Lisa, tell nice us. Interesting... Mm, sorry. Uh, tell this us about the really... results. Yes. So now that you've done the assessment, maybe start by telling us how long do you think does an assessment take, but for a group or an or an, a child. So, if you were to run an assessment for one child, it could it would it would only take you perhaps. Um, I would say maybe an hour, mm. um, but it's unlikely that you're going to be running one child at a time. What we do rather is that we assess in groups. And what I used to like to do was assess an, a, a, a development area per day over the week so that it wasn't that tight pressurized time. So on Monday, I would do all the gross motor with the whole school. I have my equipment, my ball and my beam and I'm ready to go. On Tuesday, perhaps I would then do some of the fine motor. Um, the next day, I might do the the you know a different uh, assessment area. So here you can see that the middle says assessment results by age group, and what I'm able to see is a summary of my of my class. I can see that. Social and emotional is developing, gross motor developing, fine motor. These are all developing. So I'm relatively comfortable where I'm at. But I can also pull the assessment by child. So I'm having a look at Aiden's results. Here, Aiden is scoring developing for social and emotional, but yes for gross motor, yes for literacy, and yes for numeracy. So if I were to want to move Aiden around in a group, I would then say he's in a group of children that are able to or are developing correctly for gross motor. So I don't have to do additional things with him, but I need to keep an eye on his social and emotional because he's still scoring developing and he's not quite at yes yet. Hmm. And then there's a section at the bottom where you as the teacher or center owner can add a comment, like a summary comment, um, oh. observation, and that will then go into the final report as well, which you could share with parents. That's correct. Yes. All right. So I see that we already have, I think it's Paulina asking about how do we share it with parents. So the teacher can add a comment and observation and the report can now be printed or you can download and share it on a on an email or on a WhatsApp um, with, with the parent. So if the parent has the Grow Parent app, we call that one the Lion app, they can also just open their Lion app and they'll see the report in their own uh, parent app, the Lion app. I hope that answers all your questions. You can print it, email it, share it, 
And that's a great report. So just a reminder, where do you find some of these resources? If you're thinking, oh, I want to print out that planning thing or the rubric, it's in the My Tools section. Go to the resources and it's under Forms and Templates. Yeah. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh, I, I wish teacher so-and-so was here or, wow, I need to share this uh, recording with another colleague. We have uh, in the app, there's free online training. You need a little bit of data to log in. But once you're logged in, the training itself is also data free. And there is a training on the learner assessment. So if you go into learner assessment guide, it will share some great details with you. You and your teachers perhaps do all of this training in advance and then you know you have everything ready. You can even download the checklists in the, in advance and learn how to give feedback to parents. And you'll get a lovely certificate of completion at the end. So log in from your smartphone or go via gir the Giraffe or Meerkat app to My Tools Training and Learner Assessment Guide. Okay, so whether you're in Limpopo or Woodspreit or Cape Town or Midrand, this training can be done anywhere in the country and you and your entire preschool can do this for free. If you need any help with that, the Grow App Help Desk is the best place to contact. You can email, call or WhatsApp during office hours and we'll help you. So Lisa, go for it. Sorry, um, I, I see here, we've got our slide on top tips for successful learner assessment. Yes. Um, the, I, I, and I saw a one or two comments saying, I'm busy downloading the app right now. In order for you to be able to assess a child, the child needs to be loaded onto the app. Mm. It automatically assigns an age group. So it isn't possible for you to just open the brand new app without inputting first. So you need to put the learner's details in there. You don't have to put in, you know, tons of information, but you do need to have children enrolled in your center on your app. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to assess a learner, the app automatically says, oh, which ones would you like to assess? And you say, oh, I want to assess the two-year-olds. Cool. Here's the assessment tool. So you do need to start with that. So the center owner needs to download the Grow Giraffe app. That's for center owners. The center owners um, then register teachers on her Giraffe app. Once the teacher is registered, she is able to then use the Meerkat app because it links her directly. The Meerkat app is very interesting because what it doesn't have is access to any of the business side, the finances of the center. That is only for the center owner. But the teacher on her Meerkat app is able to access all the information about her learners. When that is so important is when uh, the center owner or the principal is perhaps out or at a meeting and something happens to the learners, she is able to immediately pull up the parents' information, the contact numbers, things like that, on her Meerkat app. Because so often the principal's door's locked. So the Meerkat app is very, very useful for teachers. And on the Meerkat, it links you directly to the Giraffe app so that the learner information that is put in once remains there. And that's where you do learner attendance as well. You can mark their attendance straight away on the app. Then the next step is to complete the online training. It's so, it's quite daunting when you have a brand new assessment and you're thinking, gosh, where do I start? The training will quietly take you through day by day as you're looking at it. Um, so you won't feel at all stressed about it. Then you prepare for the assessment. Double check. Do you know what all the words mean? Do you Are you sure you know how to ask the questions? Have you got all the equipment ready? Then you do the learner assessment and you review the results with the parents after. What's also quite important is that the center owner is able to assess the comments that the teacher has written because sometimes they want to just double check that 
perhaps even grammar or spelling or whatever is all attended to before they submit to be sent out. So that's quite a useful thing for the center owners. Thank you, Lisa. And Agnes from, she says she's Aggie from Little Kids Zone Academy is asking mm -hmm. whether it's possible to get the app on a laptop. Aggie, I promise you, we really are working on it. We know that you want this app on your laptop. There are so many people asking for it. So we really hope that we can get that done. And as soon as it is available and ready on a laptop, we will definitely let you know. In the meanwhile, it's available on any Android smartphone or on a tablet. So if you need more space, maybe see if someone has a tablet, then you'll have more space for clicking and putting things in and the little keyboard. Okay, so... Oh. Um, Lisa, yeah, I think that's really great tips and, and, you know, whether you're doing it twice a year, or I see some people are saying every term, I think twice a year is a really good benchmark. These are some great tips to help you out. Uh, we can definitely come back to more questions, but I want to just share some, some other, inf other ways that grow can help you. So we've been talking about the free ECD apps, the giraffe app is for the center owner. Meerkat for the teacher and Lion app for the parent. The apps are all connected to the, the main app, which is the giraffe. As the center owner or principal, you are in control. You decide what is happening in your school. And think of this like uh, your virtual school. Whatever is happening in your classrooms and in your school, physically, it's like in the app, it's happening virtually. So you need to just load your learners, load your teachers, and then you can use the apps and you can help your teachers and parents use it too. And the app does a lot of things, not just assessment, whether you are taking daily attendance, keeping important documents, assessing learners. You can also do a professional teacher assessment, which is really incredible and have professional development conversations with your teachers. You can assess whether your center is ready for registration. You can track all your income, track all of your expenses and start building up a budget for your center and see whether you're making profit or loss. Um, you can use the tools. For example, you can uh, access through the resource center. You can download policies, procedures, templates, education support, parenting resources. We also have something new, which is the Grow Online Curriculum. Uh, that is only available to centers who are currently using the GROW program. Or if you are not using the GROW program in full, but you want to use our curriculum, you can pay for that curriculum to be unlocked on your phone. It'll be unlocked for your entire school and all your teachers can use it. You can do communications with your teachers and your parents. And what's really popular is the data-free training, which includes business skills, uh, education skills, these are all the amazing downloads. Some of the most popular downloads are the policies, procedures, templates, marketing tools. Um, we mentioned the online training. At, uh, with the, beyond the learner assessment training, there's also a teacher development training program, marketing for your preschool, budgeting, fundraising, nutrition, parenting skills, registration. So really great uh, online training courses that are available. And... I think the one that I want to rather speak about is, I mentioned the online curriculum. So if your center is really interested in using a great curriculum, you want it to be visual, you want your, learn, your teachers to know step-by-step step what to do every day by age group, the online curriculum might be exactly what you need. It's one subscription for the whole school. So whether you have one teacher or six, it's the same price. It's got 40 weeks of themed content all the way from morning ring, all the way to extension activities. There are voice notes, there are videos, there are songs, um, everything that you need to, um, to show your teachers how to implement a great curriculum. And here, this is the one you probably want to take a screenshot of. So if you're on your phone, take a screenshot right now. Here is the app support number and our regional office numbers. Okay, I missed a slide, which was the accelerator. This is the one I want to share with you. If you're a center owner and you've been running your, your, your 
preschool or your ECD center for a while and you feel like you really have a heart for children, but you're struggling with your head for business and you want to run your, your preschool more professionally and more like a small business, the ECD accelerator is exactly what you need. It's a six module course over six different days for only 600 rand, which we, we will teach you how to think like a business woman, how to take control of your money, how to run your preschool um, so that you are working towards financial sustainability, what it means to meet the NCF requirements and deliver quality education for your learners and what you need for re meeting registration. So this is available in our office in Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town, and now also in Hubecha, brand new. That is a, um, so, so I'm seeing a question here from Angelique. Angelique, I think you have a question about the online curriculum, and that is a annual subscription. All right. Let's see if there are any other questions. Um, Thank you. I think Tyrrell's made a really great comment here. Tyrrell just reminds us that if you're a teacher, you can only use the teacher app if your center owner is using the app and registers you, all right? So you can imagine we don't want random people saying that they're a teacher at your school. The center owner decides and loads who is listed as teachers. Lisa, any final comments for us on learner assessment? Well, I, I'm just so incredibly um, excited to see that 173 people have started the year with assessment in mind, yeah. that we're not at the end of the year where we are needing assessments and reports to go on to the next school or to, to for them to take to their grade R um, classes for the, for the coming year, because now is the time when we can have the most impact where we can plan for the year where we can work per child on what their specific needs are because every single child is an individual with their own unique likes and dislikes and abilities and and this is really just so exciting to see so um yeah strength to everybody um go out there go and and check on your learners and and hopefully at the end of it your teachers are all going to feel so much more empowered because they know what to look for in order to assess their child's development. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa. I will share the contact details page again. Take a screenshot of this as well as a screenshot of this, the App Support Help Desk. So if you feel like you need a little bit more help with where to find things on the app, how to get registered, how to load your teachers, how to load parents, well, how does it work? The App Support Help Desk is operated by our friendly colleague, Wendy, and Wendy will get back to you. Send her a WhatsApp, drop her an email, and she'll reply to you, right? She'll help you out. Feel free to also follow Grow ECD on Facebook. That's where we'll inform you of any upcoming training. Our next webinar is going to be all about the topics of like your most frequently asked questions when it comes to compliance, registration, governance. Uh, so all of those kind of legal matters. And we'll be sharing lots more with you. Thank you, everyone. It was great to have you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.